A class, this is our fourth and final video. If you have been following along with the timeline on your syllabus for this unit, then you would know that the test is coming up. If you have worked ahead and you're watching this video earlier than the timeline, good job. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about biomes. So before we start talking about biomes, it's important to talk about climate. So climate is going to be a long-term weather conditions in a large specific area. So as you can see on the map to the right, um, the different colors are representative of different climate zones. If you look, you can kind of see Indiana um, is towards the warm temperate slash cold temperate, cool temperate area. So that's the whole area's climate. However, for Indiana, we can talk about a microclimate, which is the climate of a small specific area within that larger climate area, the climate zone. So Indiana, while it might be either warm temperate or cool temperate, uh, the overall microclimate of it will be different than that. So what is a biome? So a biome is going to be a large community of organisms that live in the same climate conditions and have the same kind of plant communities that thrive there, so which ones can really grow there. So a biome is going to be an area where you have organisms that have the, live in the same climate and have the same plants around them. So as you can see from the map, there's a, quite a few different biomes, which we are next going to be talking about. So the first biome we're going to be talking about is the tropical. And usually in the tropical, you can think of like a tropical rainforest. It's warm, lots of rain, and an important characteristic of a tropical rainforest is a canopy which is going to be the top branches of the trees kind of make uh, a canopy, kind of like a, a tent does. They kind of make a shelter over the rainforest. But if you've seen pictures or seen the movie Tarzan, that's kind of like a tropical rainforest area. It's warm and there's lots of rain. Uh, there's less um, small plant life on the ground. If you look on the left picture, you can see there's still some, but usually the big canopy will cover most of the uh, the sun's rays from getting down to the ground. Next we are going to be talking about grassland and like the name suggests it's an area where grass is going to be the main plant in this area um, and this can be in a variety of different environments. Um, if you look to the left you can kind of picture like more of a cattle farmland so you might think like down south more um, but there could be a variety of different climates that have the conditions to where grass can be the main plant and trees don't really grow as well. Next we're going to be talking about the desert and the desert is always very dry. All right, So they're going to get less than 10 inches of precipitation a year. So if you have a place that's not getting very much water, there is obviously going to be not as much growth compared to the tropical rainforest where there's tons of rain. This is going to have almost no rain, so the plant life that lived there must be able to survive with little amount of water. And knowing that it's always dry and it doesn't get much water, my next question is, can you have a cold desert? So think about that for a couple seconds. It has to be dry and it can't have a lot of rain. So can you have a cold desert then? And so the answer to this question is yes, you can have a cold desert. Just because it says it's dry doesn't mean it's hot. And just because it doesn't receive a lot of rain doesn't mean that the rain can't look like snow. So you can have a cold desert up north. So next we're going to talk about temperate, which is going to be, um, usually you can tell uh, very well between the distinguishable seasons. There's either going to be coniferous or deciduous trees, and coniferous are going to be the ones that keep their needles all year round. Deciduous are going to be the ones that drop their leaves during the winter. And as you can see on the right and left, uh, the pictures, these are great examples of temperate rainforests that you can see. So next we're going to talk about taiga. 
Um, and these are usually going to be located in cooler climates, so you can think up north in Canada. You can see, see there's still enough uh, rainfall, snowfall, that there's going to be tree life. Uh, as you can see on the right, tons of trees, kind of looks mountainous. On the left, you can see that it does have the, the cooler climate, the snowfall. So you can think more up in Canada when we think of this. And so now we have tundra, which is going to be located even more north than the taiga. And here winter lasts as much as 10 months of the year. So as you can see on the left picture, there's not that much plant life. Lots of rocks. The snow you can see at the bottom of the picture starting to melt away. However, on the right you can see tons of snow. It looks like there's elk in the background going along. So a tundra is going to be a cold, cold um, area with lots of snow. So my final question before I end the video is what biome do you think Indiana is in? I kind of gave you a hint at the beginning talking about the climate, but what biome do you think Indiana is in? So if you said temperate, you are right. Indiana has distinguishable four seasons. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we have the spring with the flowers and the hot summer goes into a cool fall, and then finally we have the very cold and snowy winters. So because of this, Indiana is in the temperate uh, biome. So that is the end of my four video online mini lecture series. Uh, again, if you have questions, please put them in Google Classroom. Uh, if you're watching this off the schedule, we do have a test coming up. Uh, so make sure you're getting your portfolios done, getting your sign-offs done. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any questions over the video, you can watch it again, ask a classmate, or put it into Google Classroom. Thank you.